So this is a video that I've been planning on for a long time, and I've actually tried to do it three or four times. I have like four hours of footage trying to record a ultimate guide to customizing Polybar. And it turns out that it's not an easy task. It's something that is going to entail a very long and detailed video, and I've tried to do it a couple different ways. They just haven't worked out. Maybe someday those will be put into a blooper reel or something because there's some really weird moments in those those videos but the the point is this video turned out to be a lot harder to make than what i thought it was going to be but here we are we're finally going to do it i think i have a better plan than the previous times i've attempted it so what i'm going to do today is take you through the installation and setup of polybar as far as I can get you. Now, there will be some things that I won't cover in this guide, just simply because it would take too long, but also because there are some things that are just too advanced for most users to even care about. One of the things that I'm not going to cover that will probably affect some people, and probably more people than I would like, is that I'm not going to take you through the setup of multiple polybars. So if you're using this on a multi-monitor setup, that's something that you're gonna have to look up on your own. The problem with doing that is that it's a little finicky and it can be done in several different ways. So I'm just not going to cover it. Maybe I'll make a future video. If you're interested in that, leave a comment in the, sec in the comment section below and maybe I'll consider it. So that's what we're going to do today. The thing you'll need to know first is that this is going to be a very long video. I'm hoping to keep it under an hour. So at this point, at the beginning of the recording, I have no clue how long this video actually turned out to be. If I ended up being under an hour, I'm going to give myself a high five and it's going to be awesome. If I'm over an hour, which I probably will be if I don't shut my damn mouth, then I will be quite upset. But anyways, the point is, it's going to be long. I will try to include chapter markers in the video description as, as well as, you know, along the scrub bar there. And that should make it easier to jump through the video as it is. So let's jump in to installation. <laughs> So here we are in BSPWM. Now, as you can see, I have no bar whatsoever. Now, the first thing you'll need to know about Polybar is that it's going to be configured differently depending on what window manager you're using. I chose BSPWM because Polybar really works well with BSPWM. It also works well with things like i3. Once you get into other window managers, for example, Xmonad, things get a little bit dicey simply because Polybar really wasn't meant to work with them. And the way that Polybar does work with them is kind of hacky sometimes. Like there's a module you have to use in Xmonad in order to get the window, the workspaces thing to show up. It works, but it's not perfect. Same thing with Awesome Window Manager. Polybar really wasn't meant to work with Awesome. And you have to do a lot of finagling to get it to work. So for the purposes of this tutorial, we're going to focus on BSPWM. I will also try to point out the places where things will differ between this and i3. For other window managers, you're going to have to kind of figure things out yourself unless I think to remember where those things are different. Like I'll try, try to point out the things that are different for Xmonad, but I, I may not remember. So that's the first thing you need to know. The second thing you need to know is how to install it. So let's go ahead and open up a terminal. So how you install Polybar is really going to depend on what distribution you're on. Now, I'm on Arco. It's an Arch-based distro, so it's going to be easy for me. So sudo pacman-s. Oops. You're going to have to give up. You're going to have to live with me not being able to type. It's just a thing. Uh, Polybar is how I would install it here on Arch. That goes for any Arch-based distro. It doesn't matter what Arch-based distro you're on, whether you're on Vanilla Arch, Garuda, whatever. If you are on, say, Fedora, you can do sudo dnf install polybar. It, again, can't type. If you're on OpenSUSE, sudo zipper install polybar. Where it gets a little dicey for installation is for if you're on a Debian or Ubuntu based distro. Now, you wouldn't think that that'd be the case, right? Because Ubuntu is the most popular Linux distribution out there, like, period. And Debian's pretty popular too. They're very associated and they have a lot of repos in common but the problem is prior to the most recent version of ubuntu and the most recent version of debian polybar was not in the repos so if you're on say ubuntu 20.04 the last lts you can't install polybar without building it yourself you have to go through 
and build it yourself in order for you to actually get it. It's not in your repository. If you're on 21.10, you, sh you will, should be able to go through and install it using sudo apt install polybar. Same thing for Debian 11. If you're on Debian 10, the only way you'll be able to get it is by tweaking your repositories. If you're on previous versions of Ubuntu, you'll have to build Polybar yourself or see if you can find someone who has put it into a, like a PPA. I've never found one, so if that does exist, you'll get luckier than I have been. So Ubuntu and Debian are a little not great when it comes to install poly, installing Polybar simply because they were not in the repositories prior to the most recent versions. Now that they are in the repositories, they're much easier, but so upgrade your Ubuntu, you'll be able to install it easier. Uh, and there's a reason why I ha I'm not showing you how to build Polybar from source. And that's because I've never been successful at it. Every time I try to do it, I get an error. It has something to do with versioning of certain dependencies. I never really looked into it. I just gave up. I just installed a newer version of Ubuntu and installed it from the repositories. It was easier that way. So... That's how you install. Now, I already have it installed, so that's really all I need to do. Now, once you have it installed, the next thing you'll need to do is find yourself a config. So, in my case, I think I have a browser open here on 3, 2, oh, it's 2. I have a hard time finding the workspaces without a bar. But anyway, so what you have to go to, to this website here, and I'll include this link in the video description, and we need to find the configuration part. So, it's right here, and we need to find where the default configuration is stored and it's stored right here user share doc polybar config uh, and it also might be in this position here so we're going to open up another terminal and we're going to do this cp slash user share doc polybar and then config okay and then actually what we're going to need to do is open up another terminal and go into cd.config and let me move my face here for a second so that you can actually see this so we're going to have to create a polybar configuration folder. So we just do make directory, if I can spell, polybar. Okay, and then we now we can close this. Now what we're going to want to do is copy this full file into that directory we just, care, we just created. So dot config polybar. Okay, now if we cd into dot config polybar, we should do an ls here. We should have a config file, and we do. If we vim into that, so in this case, well, I'm just going to use mvim. If you see me use just v doing this, that's just an alias I have for vim. So I'm going to vim into my config file that I just created, and this is what it looks like. Now, your syntax highlighting might be different than mine because I have a whole bunch of pl uh, vim plugins that make it look cool. So yours might not look like this at all in terms of coloring, but for the layout, it should be exactly the same. Now. The next thing we need to do is we need to create a launch script. So for, to do this, we're going to do touch launch.sh. And then we're going to chmod plus x launch.sh. So what we did there is we made the script that we're going to need to use to launch Polybar every time we refresh the window manager or open the window manager. We've made that executable. So the next thing we need to do is go into that. So launch.sh. Now, we need to click on this link here and find the script that they recommend using. And that's right here. So, what we need to do is copy and paste this part here and copy this and then paste it right here. Now, this has some parts that we're not going to need because we're not going to actually have two different bars. But if you were going to have two different bars, this is how you would kind of do it. It's not the script that I would run if I for my multiple monitor setup be simply because it's not the most efficient and it doesn't always work. I would prefer an if statement. If you want to know more details about that, I would look up the Arco Linux Polybar config. You can Google that. They have a fantastic launch.sh that kind of covers every single window manager out there, and you can just kind of copy the if statement for your particular window manager. But that could be, the reason why I would do that is because the if statement that they use really works well with multiple monitors. Sometimes you write a, a launch.sh script, and it just doesn't work well with multiple monitors. But that's beside the point. Today, we're just going to deal with one bar. So we're actually going to delete this line here. And the next thing we're going to want to do is change the name of our bar. Actually, you want to, we'll leave the name of the bar the same, we'll, but the name of the bar is right here, bar one. And we want to make sure we keep that name in our minds, or you can change it. If you'd rather call it something different, you can change it. Just change this word here, to whatever you want. It should work just fine. I don't think, 
that you need to change any of this stuff here. I believe it would still work. Uh, you can change those log file names if you'd want to. So once we got that, we're going to save that by pressing Shift ZZ or colon WQ if you're using them. If you're using Nano, you'll have to do Control X and then enter a couple times. So now that we have that, we need to go into our config file, I'm into config, and we need to change one line. So what we need to do is change this line here from example to bar one. Oops, and I pressed the key because of course I did. So we need to change this to bar one because that was the name in our script. So if we now save this, and we can actually write and quit out of this, and then we do dot slash launch dot sh, we now have polybar. How about that? Now, you don't want to have to start your polybar from the terminal. It's not very good that way. It's just not the way it's supposed to do. So what you need to do next is script, call your script from an auto start file. Now, this is the first place where we're really going to see a differentiation between window managers. It's the first place. So if I'm going to go ahead and hit control C out of this, now polybar will stay up there, but I will actually kill it. That way it goes away. That we don't want to get confused. So what we need to do now is go into our BSPWM auto start file. So I'm going to CD into my repo, BSPWM, and then vim into auto start.sh. Now this is for BSPWM. You have an auto start file probably for your BSPWM config. If not, you can launch your auto start file from your BSPWM RC very easily. I'm not going to cover that here because you should know how to do that. Uh, chances are you probably already have it. If you're using something like i3, go into your i3 configuration file and write something like this. exec underscore always and then the path to the exact path, the full path to the script. So tilde slash uh, whatever dot launch dot sh. Okay. And then save your file and restart i3 and it should work. For us, we're in BSPWM. And actually, let me go back to here and uh, turn on my camera again so you can see me. Um, and then we'll just get out of here. Up here, you'll see that I actually have this line already. But this is the line that you'll need in an auto start file. Just do dollar sign home slash dot config slash bs slash polybar in this case. So we're actually going to change this. So insert dollar sign home slash dot config slash polybar slash launch dot sh and we want to put an ampersand behind that so that it continues on with the rest of the script and we're going to insert a comment here because this is this is my my actual launch dot sh which is where I, I normally start store my stuff uh, but we want to do the one that we're creating so what we should do now is right quit this and now if i restart bspwm we should get polybar and we do and this is the standard polybar configuration. It's completely set up this way. Now, you could stop here. This is perf a perfectly fine polybar. What we're going to go into next is customization. So we're going to take this and turn it into this. What you're looking at now is my actual polybar setup. And we're going to take what we have now, or what the, the example, the, the example config and turn it into mine. And I'm gonna show you how to do that step by step. So what I'm going to do is, is take you through and just rice this thing. And that way you'll be able to learn along the way several things. Now, there may be some things that I don't cover because I don't do those things in my config. I'm hoping that for the most part, you'll get a well-rounded idea of how the configuration works. And I think you will. There, I'm gonna cover some, a lot of the technical details behind some of the stuff and we're going to talk about the modules and custom modules and stuff like that. But this way, I don't have to talk about every single module. So let's go ahead and do this thing. So I'm going to go ahead and close this. And I'm going to get rid of that stupid ad. So what we're going to need to do is first we'll clear this. We're going to cd into .config polybar. And then we're going to vim into our config file. And we'll go back up here to the top. Now I'm going to go through and get rid of these first few lines. You'll notice one thing that I do is I always get rid of as many superfluous lines as possible. 
Okay, once you've deleted that text there at the top, if you wanted to, the next thing we're going to do is define some colors. Now, I'm going to take the easy way out and use a theme that I already have prepared. But if you were going to go through and do this, the easiest way to do it is right here in the color section. Now, what basically what's happening here is we're defining variables to associate with certain colors. So the background color is going to be this hex code. The background alternative is going to be this hex code and so on and so forth. Now, there are several different ways you can go about doing this. You can go through and define the variables like I'm going to, or you can go through and each module later on, just put in the hex code for whatever value you're trying to use. And I'll show you that more when we get there. For me, I'm going to just define the variables. Now, instead of me typing out 20 different hex codes on camera here and being here for another hour, I'm just going to delete this part. And then I'm going to open up a, a vertical split and get my color codes. So I'm going to actually get just copy these over, yank, and then paste. Okay, and then we're going to close this out. Now, as you can see here, I just have a ton of colors defined and associated with variables. So I'll show you how to call these variables later on. But if we actually go through and do a, a right here and then restart Polybar, you'll see that we now have a different background color. It's uh, not very, it's the last time it was black, now it's blue. Now we can delete some of these extra spaces. The next thing we wanna do is change the position of the bar. And in order to do that, what we're going to do is first we're going to change the width. So we're gonna change the width to 90%. We're gonna change the height to 22. And you can change these numbers to whatever suits you. This is just the way I'm going to do it. So and we're also going to go through and uncomment these two lines here and we're going to set the X offset to 5%. So the way the X offset works is that it's the, whatever the difference between this number and 100 is, divided by two. So if you're at 90, the difference between 90 and 100 is 10, you divide 10 by two, you get five. Okay, if you had 80 here, the difference between 80 and 100 is 20, divide by two, then you'd use 10% here. I hope that makes sense. Okay, basically what you're doing there is you're centering the bar on the screen. Your bar is always going to go 100% across the screen unless you have it set as a different width, okay? And then if you make it smaller, you want the differences between that 100 on each side. So in this case, the differences between 100 split in two to center it is 5% each, so that it would add up to 100. I explained that piss poorly, but hopefully you understand. Now, I'm going to go ahead and keep the Y percentage. Oops. I'm going to keep the Y percentage at 1%. And then I'm going to change the radius here to 9. Oops, 9. And then I'm going to do fixed centered needs to be true. Okay, and then we're going to insert uh, bottom. Now, that you don't actually have to have this here. That... Uh, equals false. This way, if you want your your bar to go to the bottom, you can. I'm just going to go ahead and put it in here, and I'm going also going to include a separator. Separator, and um, spelled that wrong. Separator. Good lord, Matt. Learn how to spell. And I'm going to use a pipe to do that. So I'm going to write and quit this, or write this, and restart Polybar. Now you can see we're there. Like this is we're very close already to where we were in that picture that I showed you. All that's really left is changing the modules. Now, I'm just gonna briefly talk about some of the stuff that's here before we go to the modules. So this background and foreground are calling the variables that are set up here. So up here, you see we have background and foreground defined, these variables defined as these two hex codes. Basically what is happening here is they're calling those variables. And we're gonna do that more often later on when we mess around with the very, with the modules. The rest of the stuff here is going to be defining borders and padding. So what you're gonna to wanna to do, so we're gonna turn off borders, so I'm gonna actually comment this out, and you comment things out in Polybar with a semicolon. So I'm just gonna comment those out, and we'll write this, and then we're gonna go ahead and restart. Now that's just, there wasn't a bar border on there to begin with, but we just wanna turn it off. I don't need a border there at all. And the padding left and right is going to change the padding before the workspace module is over here and after the system tray over here. So if you want more padding, so if we change the padding on the left-hand side to say like 15, and then we do this, we're gonna see that there's now space over here. 
I don't actually need any space over there, so we're just going to go ahead and keep, keep that to zero. We're going to change this to one. And then this module margin left and right is going to change the space between the modules here. So let's just, again, change this to some really weird number and write this and restart. We'll now see that these are all spaced out really weird on one side. So we're going to actually change this to one or keep that as one and restart and it goes back to normal. Okay, now the next thing we're going to do before we get into the modules is fonts. Now, the way Polybar does fonts is they define them kind of like variables, like we've defined the colors. And then they are called either in the code itself, which you probably will never see, or as part of a module, which you may end up seeing somewhere today. I'm not sure if we'll end up changing a font that way or not. But the point is, this is the way you call fonts. So you can call multiple fonts. And the reason why you want multiple fonts is because you want your text to be one thing. And then you also may want to call a font that has certain symbols. So for example, font awesome. And that way you can go through and put symbols next to your modules. You can go through and put symbols as your workspace things, whatever you want to do. So for us, I'm going to go ahead and delete. Actually, the easiest way to do this is to uh, delete to the end of the line. And then what we're going to do is we're going to use JetBrains Mono. So I'm going to do quotation marks, JetBrains Mono nerd font and then colon and then we want size equals the size of the font we want to use so in this case i'm going to use 10 and then i'm going to use semicolon and then here's something important you're not going to see this right now because we have no icons up there but the number that follows this so you can actually see there's a there's a a number that follows all of these the numbers that follow this is the padding of top and bottom of icons and that font so sometimes you'll notice that Oh, if you're going through and doing this, you'll have icons and the text. Sometimes the icons and the text won't be in line with one another. So like the icon will be too far close to the top of the bar, but and the, the text will be below that. And you, if you want to get them to line up so that they're, you know, in line with each other, this is the number you need to play with. So in my case, I'm going to use the, the number two and then we'll get out of this. And then once we get icons in there, I'll, sh I'll probably show you how that number actually affects icons and stuff if I remember to do that. So this next one and delete to the end of the line, insert quotation marks, and this one's going to be font, awesome, size, and then equals 13, and then uh, semicolon four, okay? And then we're gonna need font dash two, I'll just change the other one later on and then equals this one's going to be jet brains mono and then we're actually going to just yank this one and change this to three as well so we're going to and then we'll delete this okay so we've gone through and defined our fonts and you can use whatever font you want you'll just need to make sure you have that font installed okay if you don't have the font installed you'll end up with errors or things will just fall back to the default font i'm not sure which way it'll go sometimes it's one way sometimes it's the other way but you'll want to go through and make sure you have that font installed specifically if you're using icons from font awesome or nerd fonts or whatever you'll need to make sure you have that particular font installed otherwise it won't work now the next spot is going to be the, the place where you do a lot of your playing. So this, these three lines are very, very important. So this defines where the modules in the bar are located. So we have modules left and these are all, this is the module for BSPWM. And if you're using i3, you could get rid of BSPWM and leave the i3 one there. So they have two different modules for those two window managers. Now, if you're using something like Xmonad, you'll have a module that you'll need to include called EMWH, EWMH, something like that. I don't really remember the order of the letters. Uh, you'll have to look that up on your own if you're using Xmonad. And that will be the equivalent of the BSPWM and i3 modules. It doesn't work the same and it doesn't work as well if you're using Xmonad and Polybar together. It just doesn't, but you can set it up that way if you need to. I would consult the Xmonad documentation on how to do that. There is some there for you to look at. So for us, we're going to go ahead and delete the i3 one because we don't need it because we're not an i3. But if you were using i3, you'd delete the BSPWM one and leave the i3 one. Now, all this does here is put the workspaces up here. We can also go do something like this, X window. 
Okay, so if we save this now and restart Polybar, well, what we'll actually see, and you'll see that because of our changed fonts, we're actually seeing more padding here. We'll change that in a bit. We have now a new module here called X Window, and basically what X Window does is just shows the title of the window. So we can leave that here. We're going to go ahead and delete the MPD one because I don't use the MPD one. I used one called Music. So we're actually going to go through and put in all of my modules right now. So by default, these are the modules that we have up there. So we have File System, we have uh, X Backlight, which we're not actually going to see because I'm not on a, on a laptop. We have ALSA, which is this one here. We have Pulse Audio, which is this one here. We have X Keyboard, which is listing our keyboard right here. This is Memory, CPU, uh, the WLAN and the Ethernet are not showing for some reason. I'm not sure why. I never use those modules anyways. Uh, we also won't see the battery because, again, not on the laptop. This is the temperature one. Then we have the date. And then we have the power menu, which is also not showing uh, because it's not properly set up. I don't have those scripts. Actually, I'm not sure why it wouldn't show up because it should be included, but it doesn't matter. I never use it. So we're going to just go ahead and delete to the end of the line. Now, if we save this, and if I learn how to save in Vim and restart this, all of our modules just go away except for the, the, the system tray, which while I'm here, I just want to go down here to turn the system tray off go down here to tray dash position change this to none I'm just gonna turn it off so if I save this now and restart the bar the system tray goes away now I'm going to go and put in my modules now there's some modules here that don't exist yet but that's okay so I'm gonna write in music I'm gonna write in mail I'm gonna write in uptime I'm gonna write in updates and I'm gonna write in weather and I'm gonna write in PA volume that's one module that is included. I'm going to write in memory 2 and I'm going to write CPU 2. Those are all included and write in date. Now if I write and quit this or write this now and restart, the only one that's going to show up is date uh, because these other ones aren't actually in our configuration file yet. They will be momentarily. Okay. Now, let's go through and change the BSPWM module. So if we go th the rest of this stuff, you can mess around with as you want. Um, but, or you can delete as you want. Like, so the X window one we used, but the X keyboard we didn't. So we can actually go through and delete this. And we, I'm going to leave the file system one there because I may use it later on. Now, the, the BSPWM is the thing that we want to change. So the first thing we need to do is change the padding. So change this to zero. I'm going to change the all of these to zero. Now, if you'll notice... When we restart this, it eh, looks like we're going to need some more padding there. That was a little that was a little too enthusiastic with removing the padding. So we're going to change all this. Write this and restart. Yeah, that's better. Okay, now let's say we wanted to change those numbers to icons. So we, we can do that by inserting some code here. So what we're going to want to do is do w space dash icon dash zero. All right, and then I'm going to go through and do equals one. Okay, so this is for workspace one, and then semicolon, and then the icon. So what I'm actually going to do is just go to the beginning of this line, yank it, and then go through and copy it a few times. So I'm going to go and change this here to one, and this here to two, and this here to three, and this here to four, and this here to five, six, seven, eight, nine okay and look at that i copied the right number of lines so we have 10 lines we have start because this starts at zero so we had nine entries so we'll change this one here to two change this here to three and then 10. we're also going to need a icon default so we're just going to yank this again change this to w ws dash icon dash default and then change this to delete to the end of the line that way that we do that now so the next thing we're going to want to do is go find us some icons. And we can do that by searching for font awesome cheat sheet. And I actually have that in my history. So we're just going to go here. This is what the cheat sheet looks like. So let's search for, say, web browser. And let's see if we can find an icon for web, a web browser. I don't ha I don't have Firefox installed, so I don't really want the Firefox logo. But I don't see it. Uh, let's search for internet. Oh, you want to just just to troll people? We'll go ahead and use the Internet Explorer icon. Why not? So we'll go back to our configuration file here, and we'll change this word here. Oops. 
to this. We'll, so copy and paste the icon in. So now if we go through and write this and restart, that actually didn't change anything. Why didn't it change anything? Oh, I don't know why. Okay. So in order for your icon to show up, we're lucky that I actually got that, you know, quick. We need to go up here and do percent icon percent and then delete the index part, I believe. And then we need to do that for all these. So just change this word to, oops, icon. And then change this here to icon. And then change this here to icon. Now, now if we save this and restart, now we have our icons up here. So we're gonna go fed and go through and find icons for all these, why not? So we go to wherever our browser was, say the next one, say we wanted to have a terminal icon, so terminal, and then we'll select this one here, copy the glyph, go back to three, I believe, no, it was two, and then change this word here to this, and then go back to here, and let's say the next one you wanted to have was uh, chat. Uh, so we'll do a chat icon, uh, make sure we're on the free only, because I don't want to go through and see any of their pro stuff. So we'll go back to two and change word here and go to uh, chat and then go on to the next one. Back to here. Say the next one we wanted to go through and do is um, video. It doesn't really, I mean, it doesn't really, now I'm just making stuff as, up as I go. Uh, you, you just choose the icons that you want to choose. And I'll go back to this and you, you kind of get the point here. I'll speed up the video here so that you don't have to watch me go through and do this. All right, now I've gone through and put icons in for every single one. Now, somewhere during there, you saw me f copying icons, and then the icon that I thought I copied didn't show up right. Usually that happens because you're copying from a version of Font Awesome that you don't actually have installed, and the numbers that they're trying to copy and paste don't actually you know, match up. Just go back and find yourself a different icon. It's the easiest way to do this. So if I restart my Polybar now, I now have icons up there. How cool is that? Now, the next thing we want to do is change some colors. I said I was going to go through and point out the differences between i3 and BSP, BSPWM. Really, all the, that's going to be different between what I'm doing and what you do in i3 is that instead of editing the BSPWM module, you'd be editing the i3 module. For the most part, they're designed exactly the same way. So they all they both have this section here where they're going through and basically telling the bar what to display. They have they can both have a section exactly like this, and you just would have to go through and put that in by yourself because it doesn't actually go you know include this by default. But they would look exactly the same now. This last one here, uh, before I move on and do the colors, I should go through and put a, a a default icon. The default icon basically is just like a fallback icon in case you add a workspace or something and you didn't define a, a, an icon for it. So I'm just going to go back here and we'll find a random icon. It doesn't really matter. It doesn't matter. I mean, really, it, you're not going to see it anyways because we don't have any non-defined icons. And again, that's another one of those icons where that's not what I copied, but that's what showed up. That's a battery icon, not a happy face. Uh, but it, again, it doesn't matter. The, the default one is a picture of a, of a computer. Anyways, again, you won't see that unless you have a workspace that doesn't have a defined icon. So if you were to go through and add a workspace, say, say that, that you had like 20 workspaces or something, and you didn't define all the workspace to a specific you know icon, uh, then you'd have the default one show up. The Just remember that if you just want to keep the, the numbers like we had at the beginning, you don't have to put this part in there at all. But it's cool that it's there. So the next thing we want to do is change some colors. Now I'm going to actually open up a another terminal here and cd into dot config polybar again. Oops, that's not where I wanted to go. Good lord, Matt. I can't type with damn. All right, now we're we'll, uh, actually going to open up another version of our config file, and that way we can have the colors right here in front of us. So if we change this so that it's just really small, um, and then what we're going to want to do is change some colors. So these colors here define the colors of 
your workspaces. So the focused one is going to be for the workspace that you're on, the one that's in front of you. So the underline is going to be what's underlined. These are, these are fairly self-explanatory. If you don't want to underline, like I don't want to underline, I'm going to comment that part out. So for the background, we pretty much want to keep this the proper background. So we're going to just keep this colors.background. Now, in order for the foreground to change, what we're going to want to do is put in label dash focused dash foreground and then equals. Now, here's where we get to use some of our variables that we called earlier. So let's say, for example, any workspace that is focused, we want it to be, let's just say orange. So FF9 E64. We don't want to have to type that off. So what we're going to want to do is do dollar sign squiggly brackets and then we're going to do colors dot orange okay and then we'll save this and restart now you'll see we're on workspace number two which is the little code icon thing and it now is orange okay let's just say we wanted the background to be something different too so if we wanted to to, to the background to be let's just say we wanted it to be Oh, I don't know. How about this ba really ugly beige color? It doesn't really matter. We're not going to keep it that way, but we'll just go ahead and do this. B-E-I-G-E. -E. I'm sure I spelled that wrong, uh, but it doesn't really matter. We'll save this, restart polybar, and now you'll see that it now has a really ugly uh, beige color behind it. We're going to undo that, but you can see how that would work, right? So we'll write this again and get rid of that and restart. That way we just have orange. So the next one we want to do is the occupied so what this one indicates is when there's windows on a on a workspace but you're not focused on it so like so right now we have something on workspace 3 but we won't be able to know that because there's no differentiation in color for the third workspace we can change that so what we're going to want to do is get into this do label dash uh, occupied this time dash background and then equals and in this case we're going to keep the background the same so we're going to do dollar sign squiggly brackets colors dot background okay and then we're going to do label dash occupied dash foreground equals and then dollar sign squiggly brackets and now let's see let's choose a color let's make it this uh, blue color let's do colors dot blue and then we'll save this restart and now we'll see that's not really differentiated enough, but you can kind of see up there, we have windows on first and third, and we also I also have one on uh, this one here, and that's going to be Audacity, or Audacity in this case, and that's going to be our browser. But the point is, now those icons that are unfocused, but have windows on them, now have a color. So the next thing we're going to want to do is do for urgent. So I'm just going to go ahead and leave this the same. But if you wanted, so when like you press a link, you're on one workspace and it opens up in a browser that's on another workspace. This color is the color that would just kind of flash in that browser to let you know that something op happened on that workspace. I'm just going to leave it the same. It's just going to be red. Red is fine. The empty icons, we just want to have be the regular foreground. So we're going to delete this alt part and save this and see what that looks like. Yeah, that looks better. So the, now we've gone through and you know, you could go through again and, and add if you wanted to empty ones to have a different background or a different foreground, you would just go through and do label dash empty dash background equals yada, yada, yada. You know what I mean? You can also change the foreground to whatever you want it to be, whatever. I hope that you get an idea of how you go through and change colors. So you, this part or on this side here is always going to be whatever you're changing. So in this case, you're changing the label. Icons are, are almost always called labels, okay? And then the second part of it is usually the name of the label. So in this case, or the, the defining nature of the label. So in this case, it's the empty labels that we're talking about. And then you're doing the... what the specific part of the label that you want to define. So background, foreground, underline. Those are the things you want to you, you want to play around with and that's what you'd change. And then on this side of the thing you'd change the colors. Now, just while we're here, let's go back up here to the focused one. Let's just say we wanted to change this focused one and we didn't want to use a variable. So if we change to the the dollar sign here and we could go through and just do FFFFFF and save that and quit. 
Now you'll see that the focused ones, instead of being orange, are now just really white. Okay? You don't have to use the variables that we defined earlier. You can just use the hex code. It works per exactly the same. You can do either. It doesn't really matter. I choose to use the variables. You can just use the hex codes in these positions. It doesn't matter. It, and that works for every single module in Polybar. So I'm going to actually go ahead and undo that so that we can keep our change. Okay, so we're back to orange. Now, that is that module there. So the next one we want to change is the X, win X window one. So let's say we want X window to be a different color. So in this case, let's do label dash foreground equals and then dollar sign squiggly brackets. And let's just say we want it to be pink. So colors dot pink. And we'll have to spell that right. So we save this, reload. Now we have that being pink. I call it pink. It's probably red. I don't know why I called it pink. It doesn't matter. Anyways, uh, that's how you change the X window one. And you can do this for pretty much any module we're at. So the next one we're going to do is just search for date. Okay, so we have the date module here. All right, so there's a lot of stuff here that we, we can change. And this is where things get a little bit more complicated. And this is also where the... Of videos that I recorded before kind of went off the rails because I tried to go through every single module and unfortunately every single module is going to be different that is the sad just sad sad state state that you're gonna find yourself in because sometimes modules will do th things one way other times modules will do things a different way and in the previous videos I tried to go through each module and explain how those differences affect things and how you should change the things and it just ended up being a pain in the ass. Now, this video here, before editing, is already at an hour long and I'm hoping <laughs> that we're almost done, but I, you know, I, you know, I doubt it. Unfortunately, we're, we're just getting into the modules. But what I've decided to do is just take you through a couple more modules and kind of give you a feeling for how this is done. The good news about Polybar is that each of these modules does have its own documentation. So if you go to the website, which I closed earlier because I'm a, I'm a tool. Anyways, if you go to the website and go to the wiki here and then you scroll down here, you see how these modules here along the side, each of these have their own documentation. So you can go through and read the documentation and see how these particular modules differ from each other. And you can also, every single module here is included with Polybar, so you can actually add these things to your configuration file if you want to. Now there's a couple things that I'm going to, before we get out of here, there's a couple things that I'm going to show you how to change. So first we're going to go back to this and we're going to change this date one. So we needed to define an icon. So in this case, it's format-prefix. Okay, equals, and then quotation marks, and then the icon. So we're going to go back here, and we're going to go back to Font Awesome, which, of course, I opened this up in a, in a the same tab because, again, I'm a tool. <laughs> we'll search for this again, and we'll go to clock. Okay, we'll search for a clock. We got a clock here. We'll grab that icon. We'll go back to two. We'll copy and paste. And, of course, that's, it didn't show up the correct way. So we'll get rid of the non-free ones. Now we should be able to see this one here. I'm pretty positive that that's the right icon. Anyways, we'll try this again. There we go. That works. Now, if we write this, restart, we now have an icon up there next to the clock. So the next thing we want to do is just delete or comment out the underline because I don't want an underline. And then we're going to want to go through the foreground. We want this to be change word. And this can be, let's just say, green. So let's just colors.green. And we'll write that. Now, if we restart, now we have the icon as a green color. If we want to change the color of the text, we do format dash foreground equals dollar sign squiggly brackets. And then let's just make this purple colors dot purple and write this and restart. Now you'll see how the text has become purple. Now, Notice what I did there. Format prefix. So we did format prefix is always going to refer to the, to the icon. And then we wanted to change the foreground. For the text, it's just format foreground. Where this gets difficult is that that's not always the case. So some modules will use 
In fact, most modules are going to use this nomenclature right here. You'll have format prefix will refer to the icon, format, foreground, and background, and whatever will refer to the text itself. The vast majority of them do that. Some things like some of the volume modules don't have a prefix defined at all. You can if you want to use that if you, you want to, but you have to put in that, that in yourself. I know it's very confusing. And again, this is my fourth time trying to do this video and I have still not come up with a good way of saying, hey, you want some of the modules are just different from each other. That's just the way it is. And I can't spend even more time going through each and every single one of them. If you're interested in a video where I do just go through all those single modules, I suppose I could do that. Make sure you drop a comment for that in the in the comment section below. If you're still watching this, if there's anybody still watching at an hour long, bless you. Seriously. I mean, I don't even want to be here at this point. Um, and another stupid ad. Just go away, Brave. This is why I'm thinking about going back to on Google Chrome. And those ads are ridiculous. I know I can turn them off, but still. Anyways. Let's go through and add a module. So I'm gonna, if you remember here up here at the top where I went through and put in all of my modules, I have a whole bunch of modules here that just don't exist. So let's just go down to the bottom and we're gonna create ourselves a custom module called music. So in order to create a custom module, we'll do module. Actually, what we're gonna have to do is um, go back up here. It has to be in front of these settings. Sometimes these settings are at the top of the, the documents sometimes are at the bottom, but they have to be either at the top or the bottom. So we'll do module. Don't worry about those settings. Half of those things you'll never have to deal with anyways. So we'll just do module slash music. And then what we're going to do is do type equals custom slash script. Okay. And then we're going to choose the interval of which it's going to uh, refresh. So an interval equals, in this case, we can just use 120. You can use any number of seconds that you want to use. Uh, I believe that's in seconds, but that's just the way I, I've used this. So format dash prefix equals, and then this is going to be an icon. So we'll go back here, search for music, and then this one here is fine. Grab the icon, go back to two, and then copy and paste that. We're going to actually put a space in between there if we want to. Oh, that's another thing that you can do. If you want space in between the icon and the text, you can just add a space here in between here and it will show up uh, on the bar. So the next thing we want to do is format dash prefix and then foreground equals dollar sign colors dot. I don't really care. It doesn't really matter. Let's just call it cyan. Okay, and then we'll do, now we need to tell it what script to execute. So in this case, what you're going to do is if you say you have a script that you use for another bar, so like B DWM bar or whatever, it doesn't matter. You can use that here. So what we're going to do is exec equals and then bash in this case, because it's a bash script. We're going to do slash user slash local slash bin slash mpd.sh. That's, that's my mpd script. And then what we're going to do next is going to go and add a click event. Now I've done a video, I think it'll already be posted, uh, on how to do a click event. So I'm not going to cover that here. We're going to do click left equals alacrity dash dash class and then muse mus comma mus quotation marks dash e n c m p c p p. Okay. Now we write this and restart polybar. We now have my MPD script. If I click on that, we have the music player come up and that's how that's done. Now I'm going to go through now and add the rest of my modules. Okay. And I'm going to do that on like 300 or 400 speed, unless I come across a part where I feel like I have to go through and explain it. And I'm going to do it this way because there's like a ton of them. It's just going to be repetition work but at this point. Everything else is going to be basically the same. We're going to go through, we're going to add a several, couple more scripts. We're going to go through and add icons. We're going to go through and change colors. That's all we're going to do. So format prefix foreground is going to change the color of the icon. Format pr format dash foreground is going to change the color of the text. That's what you need to know. So watch me go through and do this really, really fast.
Okay, here's a part where it's going to be a little bit different. So I thought I'd cut in here. Instead of using a bash script here, what I'm actually going to be doing is just using a, ba a command that you normally use on the bash or on, in, on the command line. So in this case, I'm going to use tail dash one and then a, ta a, pale, uh, a path to a, f a file. And that's the reason, the reason why I'm doing this is because the, the script that you would normally use for this for uh, Pac-Man can only be run once. It can only be running in the background one time. So if you have multiple bars, one bar is going to be giving you an error. So in, in my case, what I've gone and done is taken that script, piped it into a file, and then Polybar just goes through and checks the file. So in this case, it's going to be .config slash updates. And then we'll write that. And now if we reload, we actually have the number of Ike updates I have. So that's how that's done. And while I'm here, I'll also show you how to do the weather one. So in this case, we're going to do module slash weather. Okay, and then we're going to do uh, type equals custom slash script. And then we're going to do interval. And this one's going to refresh a lot quicker. So I'm going to do it have 10. Um, just remember the the more you have an update, the more CPU heavy this is going to be. So I just have it at 10. Uh, you can set the number to whatever you want. I'm going to do format equals, and th in this case we're going to do label. Now basically th this is just going to be defining what the what is being shown later on. You don't have to have this part. I just happen to have that part. So format dash prefix equals. In this case we're going to need to go through and uh, find a weather icons so in this case we're just going to look for cloud and paste that in there and we're going to put a space in there in case we need it and we'll do format prefix foreground equals dollar sign squiggly lines colors dot green because reasons okay and then what we're going to do is we're going to use the same exec line here but instead of a bash script or a command we're going to use python because this is a python script and we're going to do dash u because we have to and we're going to do the path to the script so user usr slash local slash bin slash weather dot pi and this is my script now you can find a, a link to my gitlab page in the video description and you should be able to find all of my scripts there so if you wanted to use these scripts for yourself you could go through and do that now i believe the weather one that is up there does not have an API key or any of that kind of stuff there, so you'll have to go through and get your own API key. You won't be able to use mine. I think that I have that set up that way. If I don't, I shouldn't be, you know, giving up my API key. So I'm just going ahead and um, actually, I need to add one more line here: tail equals true in order for that to get direct to work. So we're going to refresh here. Now we should have weather up here, which we do. We have weather right up there. That's cool, huh? All right. So I believe. Now we need uh, just two more things. So the next one is going to be, we're going to search for CPU. We can actually go up here, back up here to a CPU and change this to one. So we don't actually, so the, the Polybar comes with three different CPU modules. The only one that's in the, the standard configuration file is the first one. I'm just going to go ahead and use that one for time sakes. And then I, that way I can show you one more of me editing one that comes up here. So if we save this and reload, we now have the, CPU thing there. So if we do C go, go to that CPU module right here, we're going, we need to change the icon. So if we go back to three and type in chip, I believe we can find a, 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 a computer chip here or something. Why would that be easy, right? CPU maybe? Um, that'll work. Micro, microchip. We would have got there eventually. And then we'll go back here. We will paste this in. Yep, that's good. And then we'll change this color here to, let's just say, uh, light blue. And we'll get rid of the underline. And then we're going to go ahead and save this and restart. Now we'll see that the underline is gone. We have an icon here. Now, the one thing about the CP one here is this number here by the label, where it's basically telling the module what to output. You can change this number here, which was 2, to something different. And you'll change the space between the icon and the text. So if we restart this now, well, you'll see that there's now more space between the icon and the text. And what basically what this does is because that number changes so often, you don't want it to have to go through and be really close to the icon. It will just look bad. So you change this number here, that kind of changes the padding between those two, uh, the icon and the text. So I'm going to go back to two. Two is fine. But that kind of gives you an idea of what that does. Now that also kind of shows you 
how some of these things are different. So some of these things have things that are dedicated for, for labels. So things that have uh, different things that can be displayed. So for example, the the memory one here can be memory two if you want to include the second memory module. And that one has different tokens that you can display. So it can do gigabyte use, gigabyte free, gigabyte total, gigabyte use, megabyte use, megabyte free, megabyte total, and so on and so forth. And that would be defined in this label line right here. It can get really complicated in every single module that's like that. So the CPU one, the memory one, the volume one, those all have things like that, and they're all done a little bit differently. So I highly recommend you going to that module's documentation to make sure you know what you're doing. Uh, in, in this case, I'm just kind of ignoring this because these first modules, the CPU ones, which is basically just CPU one, uh, don't have that functionality. These are just really simple. They don't, they don't have the extraneous stuff that you include, at least out of the box. You can go through and include those if you want to, but again, you'd have to find that in the documentation. So that is CPU, and I believe we also did memory up there as well. So if we go up here to memory, up here, and then change this to just that, and then restart, we'll also now have the memory one up here, and we can change that as well. So if we go to down here, so we want to get rid of the underline and change the color to let's just say dark orange and then we'll have to go find a an icon for that so for memory i believe there is a memory icon there is awesome so copy that go back up here change this to this and of course that's not the right one that came up so font awesome is crap and then um, we'll just delete that and that's better now restart that and now we have that so that is our bar and that's where we're going to end this video so that picture that i showed you before looked something like this uh, whether or not i chose the same colors along the line i don't know because the picture that i showed you earlier was a picture of my actual bar actually so if you remember back to the beginning of the video i showed you a picture of this and now we're here now i hope you've learned something from this because this video took ages to record just like freaking forever um like i'm on that hour and a half i'm assuming that i'm gonna be able to pare that down in editing <laughs> i really hope so because nobody's gonna watch an hour and a half video on polybar but i hope like i said i hope you learned something from this now obviously i didn't cover everything that i could have covered i could have been here for four or five hours going through every single module how every single module differs from all the others and so on and so forth i could go through all the settings that you you could potentially set that will change certain things I'm not going to do that in this video. That'd be more for an advanced user. So I'm also, and I'm also not going to cover how to do this on multiple bars. That is it for this video. If you have questions, you can leave those in the comment section below. I will try to answer them. If I don't get to everybody, I apologize for that, but I'll try. You can also contact me on Twitter at the Linux cast. If you have questions and you'd prefer to contact me via Twitter, sometimes YouTube deletes stuff. So Twitter's probably the best way to do that. You can also jump into the discord server link for that is in the video description below. I'm pretty much always online there and you can ask questions there. You can support me on Patreon at patreon.com slash linuxcast. Before I go, I'd like to take a moment to thank my current patrons. Thanks everybody who's watching this still at the end. I truly do appreciate it. Thank you for watching. I'll see you next time.